Captain Adam back. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite planes. And now I won't tell you, but it's the A350 XWB. XWB, I'm sorry, I, I mispronounced that, sorry. But first, we have to talk about the history of how this plane was made. So it started in the early 2000s when Boeing announced their 7E7 project. And if you don't understand what that is, it's basically the 787 project. So don't, don't get confused when I, say, when I say 7E7 in this video. So back on. So Europeans uh, didn't take this challenge too seriously. They thought American is the new answer to bootlegs of amazing Airbus planes. They just thought of making an A330-200 light. Improved aerodynamics, more efficient engines, new cockpit, I think. But uh, this project was, a, was, an, was supposed to be announced in 2004. But in 2004, they no realized that the future 787 would become much more efficient. So that leads us into the A350. So now they built a completely new plane, the A350, which is going to be the plane we're going to be talking about today. So this plane is pretty much um, an A330 modification. Well, well, basically a new A330. So this thing uses Trant XWB engines from Rolls Royce. So, and it can have several types of landing gear depending on which version. But I'm gonna have to talk about the versions before I talk about the landing gears. But, so they, so Airbus, so nearly 53% of the plane is made of composites. That's really, 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 really close to the to the 787 with its 50%. So, and they abandoned their classic wingtips and put these sharklets for the new large ones, which you could very easily mistake for winglets, but they're not. As you can see, they don't go almost like crazy, like a 90 degree angle. It just goes like a, f like, it's much smoother. So now we get into the version. So there are supposed to be a few of them. So first we have the normal and basic A350, sorry, I'm used to saying A380, the A350-900. This is the basic and this is a basic version. So this accommodates about 325 passengers, flies on a range of about 15,000 kilometers. Next we have the, oh yeah, also it has a, t a maximum takeoff weight of 280 tons. Next we have the Dash 900F, which is just a cargo version that can carry 92 tons of cargo over 9,000 kilometers. Next we have the ACJ350. Don't get confused when I say this in the video as well. Because this is a VIP modification that only carries about 30 passengers. But you will just think you stepped into a, whole, into, a, into a fancy hotel room. Gotta be honest with that. This thing has a crazy range of 20,000 kilometers. Which is expected because it only carries about 30 passengers. And it's only for VIP, so you won't see this plane very often. Next, we have the Dash 1000 version, which is much longer, but has a shorter range than the Dash 900. It's a range of 14,800 kilometers, and I said that, 200 less than the Dash 900, oh, again, because it's longer. Right now, I'm holding an A350 XWB, but I have no idea if it's a Dash 900 or Dash 1000, because there's nothing here that says, like, Dash 900, Dash 1000. Now you might have heard of one other version. <clears throat> the A350-800 was supposed to be a shorter modification of the Dash 900. 
accommodating about 280 passengers. But research showed that its performance wasn't that much better than the A330. And when the A330neo project was started, this version was rejected from the family. And that really is a bummer. Because I really wanted to see this plane fly. Which is a stupid bummer because this thing would be awesome to fly. Next, we have the landing gears. It has revised gears, which can be different depending on which version. The basic Dash 900, or any Dash 900 for that matter, has four wheel buggies. But the heavier Dash 1000 version has six wheel buggies, similar to the, to the Boeing 777. But this video is not about the 777, or the 787 for that matter, because I'll do the 787 in the next video. And, it, and back with the A350. So the cockpit is basically a revised A380 uh, cockpit. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm really sorry for that. Now, for the first time in Airbus, and for the first time in Airbus, we can, pilots can use the head-up display. A panel that shows all the, the gauges and stuff like that, all the in-flight, everything that's happening, like the altitude, like the altitude and stuff like that but you're just looking in front of you you're not looking at the gauges and like but this this thing was finally announced in 2006 and xwb stands for extra wide body the official name but come on seriously when you look at the boeing 787 beautiful name dreamliner the liner of dreams that's WB. Seriously, Airbus? You have stuff like military typhoon bombers, and you call this gorgeous new plane XWB? This name may suit a phone adapter, not an airplane. That's a real bummer. You could have called it something awesome, but um, or nice and beautiful, but you called it XWB. So this wide body long haul aircraft. Next, we have the ultimate A350, the ULR. I'll try to I'll try to let you guess what ULR stands for. So, okay, are we ready? So, it stands for <clears throat> in three, two, one, ultra long range. This thing has an increased to 280 tons of mass, has a range of 18,000 kilometers, or 9,700 miles, enabling, okay, now you're gonna get, you're gonna, you're pretty much gonna pass out with, you're gonna faint with what I'm about to say, enables up to 19 hours of flight. And Singapore Airlines was lucky to get the first A350-900 ULR. They were very lucky, and they made the longest flight from New York, uh, um, Singapore to New York, lasting for 18 hours and 45 minutes, which is insane, because people might have gotten sick during that flight, and it's but it was all amazing. If I if I was on that flight, I would be super lucky, but I'm still here in my regular room. So making my usual videos. So the A350, but first the corporation to make this plane was postponed with the BMW owner, with the BMW, the BMW uh, founder I think. But because this post, it was postponed because they were ready to release their flagship model, the A380. And the corporation wasn't good enough to make two big airplanes at the exact same time. Which is crazy, but um, yeah, yeah, whatever. So, th and this thing has Trant XWB uh, Rolls-Royce engines, like I said before. Now let's talk about the Dash 1000 a little bit more. 
I didn't say about the passengers, which you can carry 387. I think I said that earlier, but I'll say it again. 387 passengers. 14,800 kilometer range. I'm just saying this again, just to give you an example. And we are waiting, me and other captains are waiting for Airbus to make even more interesting planes. Uh, maybe they can make a plane called the A370, which would be a twin-engined A380, which would just look insane, but everyone would be laughing at the design and say, oh my god, how did Airbus make that? I cannot believe that. Or, I'm waiting for Airbus to make an A400. I'm still waiting for that. Who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe it could be a quad-decker. <laughs> of course, I'm joking, but... Maybe it could. So, this was, oh yeah, the wings were made of carbon fiber, which is the largest wing of any plane with, with one passenger jet. deck, I'm sorry. At least until the Boeing 777X enters the market. Anyway, uh, that was about the carbon, an amazing airliner. Oh yeah, also, also, it had an ETOPS 370 certificate. First flight in 2015. And guess what? This plane literally never crashed. I'm serious. Never crashed. Let, let that sink into a moment. So, guess what? That was the end of the video. I hope you liked this. Please look forward to the next video. This was Captain Adam. Bye. And this was about the carbon airliner, the A350. Bye.